Welcome to the tutorial on uh, your introduction to working in three dimensions with Vegas. We're going to start with a real simple project. If you want to come out to youtube.com slash Quaker video and find the one that says XYZ axis 3D in Vegas. Go ahead and take a quick preview of it. I'll play it here. So hopefully from your math classes you guys are pretty comfortable working with an X and a Y axis two dimensions. Uh, normally, you know, when you draw and page on a page, you don't kind of you don't tilt that x-axis like that. You just have it straight across. But to get your 3D view, it, it's helpful to tilt it a little bit. Now, the third dimension, of course, is your z-axis. And your z-axis, normally, you would think of that as coming straight out of the page, right at your at your face. There, that's the way Vegas views it. And this picture I've gotten, it's um, it's been tilted just a little bit, just so you can help s visualize it a little easier. So what we're going to do is we're going to put three different text um, boxes on and we're going to rotate them and you can see it happening right now, kind of choppy, but when you watch it will go a little faster. Um, you can see the Y is rotating around the Y axis like it was a weather vane. The X rotates around the X axis. It doesn't quite match up with the picture perfectly because the picture's X axis is a little bit you know, slanted there. Uh, and the Z, the Z text tilt rotates around the, t the Z axis, which is coming straight out of the page. That's why it looks like it's um, kind of just rotating clockwise. So that's the project we're going to make. Let's take a quick sneak peek at the finished version of it in Vegas that I made to create that. You notice I've got um, four tracks visible. I've got a fifth track down here. That's the Z or the Y axis. But basically, what I have is my first track is. I'll solo that. It's just your name I'm going to put up there. Then my second track, I laid down the coordinate plane. I just took that off Google. You can skip that part. You don't really have to have it. I thought it might be helpful just to visualize it. Uh, and then I have a track for each one of the X, Y, and Z. So just looking at the Y axis one, the difference that um, you'll notice in the timeline is over here in the compositing mode, I've changed that to 3D. And then I've had to add in track motion, which creates these keyframe, little, those little diamonds, and it puts it right in the timeline. And if you're not used to working with keyframes from doing your special effects, um, hopefully you'll be, you'll be used to it by the end of this video. But the big difference is, um, of course, when you've normally been using keyframes, you always apply them to the clip itself. Like you go into the clip and then you um, do keyframes inside here. But when you're working with 3D, you add the keyframes right to the track so therefore everything on this track would be affected by those keyframes and that's why I have each um, X, Y, and Z have getting its own separate track. So that's a preview. Let's go ahead and make it. So I'm going to open up Vegas. Where are you at? Here it is and this is my failed attempt. So I'm going to start over again. I've had to start this video over three times already. So you guys open up Vegas, start a new project and I'm going to go ahead and insert in four video tracks. I'm going to skip the um, track for the coordinates or coordinate plane. So my very first track, I'm just going to put my name, insert some text media, put your name, it doesn't need to be that big, pick any font you want, whatever, place it, I'm just going to place it up in the top right hand corner, I'm not going to worry about my safety zone because I'm going to edit this to the computer anyways. Okay, so that's great. Now I'm going to insert my Y axis. I'm going to do the Y one first because the Y is kind of, um, I think it's the easiest one to kind of visualize. So let's just start with that. So Y axis, maybe make it a little smaller. And why not give it a nice color. And I'm going to put this one down towards the bottom. I'm going to try to keep the text apart from each other. So far so good. So now here's where we do the 3D. You come over to compositing mode. Click into this, do 3D source alpha. Doesn't really seem to do anything yet. Now to actually make it move and rotate, we're going to go into track motion. Now this is going to pop up. And you want to place it in your screen so that you can um, still see the preview as well as seeing what's going to happen when you, when you move it around. So in, in this 3D track motion, you have a lot of options. I'm not going to go into all of them. You can play with these um, as you get more into it later but there's a whole bunch of um, little options you can do. But what we want to focus on for this simple video is just the rotation. So we can rotate our object through the three different 
axes, the x, y, and the z. So let's start with the x. So just to kind of get a feel for it, right now it's a, a zero degrees, it's just normal. And let's go 45 just to kind of watch it. See how it started to rotate? And let's go, say, 75. See it's rotating? Now if you can imagine, what's going to happen when it gets to 90 degrees? A 90 degree rotation is going to be perfectly inside and out and just disappears from the screen. Now as it keeps rotating around, it comes out on the other side. 178, whatever. And then at 180, it's going to be perfectly flipped around. So you can imagine there's a y axis, my cursor is going up and down, and it's rotating around that. So what I want to do is I want to add a keyframe. I'm going to zoom up on this track. Um, if you remember, when I added that, it was perfectly 4 minutes and 29 seconds long. So when I get right to there, I should see my y axis, or I guess it was 4 seconds long. So there it is. That's the very end of it. So I'm going to add a keyframe right there. And on that keyframe, I zoomed in a little bit with my mouse, I want to make it 360 degrees. This is at the end now. So I'm all the way at the end of the clip. And in the very beginning of the clip, I want it to start at zero. So basically, I'm going to try to get it to go from zero, and then all the way by the end of the clip, spin all the way around once. So it's going to go to 360. If you wanted to spin more, you could put 720 or whatever, bigger numbers. Um, and that's all that should be to it. Now notice here, this thing popped up, this position. It's showing there's that first keyframe I made, and then here's the second one I made right at 4 seconds. And you could always move that around a little bit if you wanted to, but I have it lined up perfectly. So now let's go back and play it, and we should see it's spinning. There it goes, pretty quickly. It's all, it's all happening in four seconds. So if I wanted to slow it down a little bit, I'm going to go into this guy here. I'm going to change the length from 4 to 9, let's say, to let's double it, or maybe 7, add three seconds on. Now, that means I can pull this out all the way to that little chunk. You see that little chunk that came out? That means that's the end of the clip. If you go past that, you basically just start copying and, and you're starting over again the clip just kind of looping it so now I'm going to move that keyframe so it goes right to the end and just so my name doesn't disappear I don't care if I loop my name because it doesn't do anything and now when I play it it's still spinning it's going a little bit slower so that's pretty cool so that's the y-axis now I'm going to do that same thing for the Z and the X so I'm going to copy that clip I'm going to paste it down here you want to create a new source copy and then I'm going to go in and edit that. And I'll say this is X. And why not change the color? Sure. Oh, and I forgot to do the bump map. Let me show you that. I'm going to change the placement on that X2. Go back inside of it, change the placement so it's now all mashed up on top of that Y. To bump map something, gives it a little bit of a 3D feel. So I'm just going to add that so it looks a little bit cooler. That way, as the Y, see how it's rotating right now? If it was a true 3D text, you should see a little thickness to the letters. So to add a, a bump map, you can go into your video FX, which you can come down here and get to, or you can always cl click right on the clip itself, which says Event FX, either way. I kind of like to go this way. So all of them show up, and I want to find the one that's bump map, Sony bump map. So I'm going to double click it, that adds the, the special effect onto it, say OK. And now I'm going to go in and get to set up the way I want it. This is kind of this direction that the light's coming from, to kind of give it that 3D feel. And then I'm going to increase the shininess a little bit. It's hard to see in your preview monitor because the quality's so low, but when you guys, you can play around a little bit with yours. It gives it just a little bit of a bump, a little bit of a 3D feel. And of course, I can do the same thing to my x-axis and my z. So I'm going to pause the video and go ahead and do the x and the z, uh, the z, put a bump map on it and get the z ready. And then I'll come back and we'll do the um, 3D effect together. Hey, oh, hey, wait, before I did that, before I do that, um, I noticed where I'm almost at 10 minutes, which is the YouTube limit. So I'm going to pause here for part one, and I'm going to go ahead and start up a part two. And in part two, I'll do the, the uh, y and the z. And then, of course, we'll go ahead and do the um, programming on there, and we'll be finished with that.